Apple is finally competing with Aura and Whoop when it comes to health tracking by launching the new Vitals app as part of watchOS 11. But can you now replace both your Aura ring and your Whoop strap with an Apple Watch? Well, today we'll find out. We'll do quite a bit of testing and we'll also compare the Vitals app to the Aura ring and Whoop straps apps. I tested the Vitals app over several weeks by wearing an Apple Watch Ultra 2 on my left arm and an Apple Watch Ultra 1 on my right arm. Now I'm testing the Vitals app with the Apple Watch Ultra by checking how consistent the measurements are between my two Apple Watches and my hypothesis is as follows. If for some metric the agreement between both watches is quite low, then in that range of measurements the Vitals app isn't very sensitive. However, if there is a strong correlation, then it's much more likely that the measurements are reasonably good, even within my own normal day-to-day -day variation. Now, the reason that I stress normal day-to-day -day variation is because I never felt sick in this period, so there were no major physiological changes to my body. Now, I chose the Apple Watch Ultra specifically since this is the largest and heaviest of the recent Apple Watches, which increases the chances of inaccurate measurements because it might move a bit more on my wrist. And since all recent Apple Watches basically have the same sensor, I expect that lighter models do at least as well or even better. Now for this test, I wanted to make sure that the measurements of each of these two watches are completely independent, so each of these Apple Watch Ultras is connected to a different iPhone with a different Apple account. But first, what is the Vitals app and how does it work and what can and more importantly can't it do? Well, if you're very skeptical, you might say that in essence the Vitals app is just a new way of visualizing the data that your Apple Watch collects. However, this is actually quite important because historically the Apple Watch and Apple Health have been quite bad at presenting health and activity data to the user and the Vitals app is an attempt to fix that. The Vitals app focuses on five key metrics, resting heart rate, oxygen saturation, breathing rate, sleep duration and wrist temperature. Each morning the Apple Watch tells you the exact values of these metrics and it tells you if one or more of these were out of your normal baseline. Now the easiest way to check this in the morning is by looking at your Apple Watch where it is displayed in an actual app. However, the downside is that on the watch you can only see the detailed data for that day and an overview of some of the last days. However, if you want to look at all your data in detail, you're going to have to take out your iPhone. Initially, I thought it would be available as a separate app similar to the fitness app for sports, but unfortunately that isn't the case. It turns out that the Vitals data is displayed in the health app. It's basically a separate metric within the health app similar to how, for instance, your heart rate or sleep data is presented. And here you can actually find all the measurements and see when you had any outliers over the last weeks. And this is actually a very important type of data interpretation, since any significant deviation from your normal baseline could mean something actionable. Say your resting heart rate and breathing rate were a lot higher one night. This means you likely had poor sleep quality and it might even be an indication of some kind of respiratory infection. So you might want to take it slow the next day to be on the safe side. Or if for instance your temperature is much higher than your baseline, you might just have an influenza or COVID infection. Now I have quite a lot of thoughts about the current data presentation in the Vitals app and also how it compares to the competition, but let's start by looking at the data consistency. Let's start by looking at something that should be relatively easy for an Apple Watch to measure your resting heart rate. Again, I'm using the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and Ultra 2 as an example here, but I expect the results to be the same for any recent Apple Watch. Now each dot here is a single night of sleep, with along the horizontal axis the measurement according to the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and on the vertical axis the Ultra 2. And we can see that the measurements generally agree very well and both watches basically detect roughly the same value for each night, with most deviations falling between 1 or 2 beats per minute, so very good. The correlation this value up here is also quite high at 0.95, especially given the fact that we're only looking in a very narrow range, so between about 40 and 55 ppm. And this correlation is also very significant with a p-value of 6.32 times 10 to the minus 10. So a value of 0.05 would already be considered significant and this is a lot lower. So for resting heart rate, I'm reasonably sure that the Apple Watch is pretty accurate. And for breathing rate or respiratory rate, in other words, we see more or less the same thing right here. The correlation is a tiny bit lower now at 0.91, but as you can see the points agree very well and we see a high level of agreement between the Ultra 1 and Ultra 2. So also for breathing rate, I would say that for most nights both Apple Watches detected roughly the same average breathing rate. The blue line right here is by the way the best fitting line through the points and as you can see this is a nice linear association and also the p-value is again very significant. And in addition to that Apple watches also estimate the total amount of sleep I got and that is displayed right here. So along the horizontal axis and vertical axis we have the total minutes I was asleep according to the Apple watch Ultra 1 and Ultra 2 and as you can see these values agree very well between the two watches. 
there's a tiny bit of deviation, but for most nights it's almost the exact same value. We have a correlation of 0.95, so pretty good, and again a very significant p-value. So, so far things are looking very good, however the last two metrics aren't quite as good. So let's first look at skin temperature, here display along the horizontal axis in degrees celsius for the ultra 1 and along the vertical axis for the ultra 2. And as you can see there's a marginal agreement between the two at best. Yes there's a tiny bit of correlation, so a correlation of 0.38 which is still technically significant. However, as you can see within this relatively narrow range of temperature values, there's just not a lot of agreement between these two watches. Now we're looking at a very narrow range, so between 35.8 and 36.6 degrees Celsius, and the general trend degrees, but it's very noisy. So I would say that within this narrow range, the measurements of this Apple watches aren't very meaningful. It could also just be that the temperature variation the Apple watches measure are real, and that between the two nights, the temperatures of my wrists were actually different, maybe because I had one on top and one beneath the blanket there could be different reasons but this still means that the temperature measurements within these ranges aren't that useful we're basically using skin temperature deviations as a proxy for your core body temperature which is what we really would like to know and this just isn't sensitive enough in the temperature range we're looking at here that's not to say that the apple watch can't detect when you have a fever or when you're going through your menstrual cycle because i wasn't able to test that but this does mean that night to night skin temperature deviations between roughly 0.5 and 1 degree celsius are likely not very informative. For my American friends this means that the deviation of roughly 1 to 2 degrees Fahrenheit night to night just isn't that useful. By the way, if this analysis is helpful, it really helps me get access to new devices sooner and helps me reach more people if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Tapping those two buttons just now would really be amazingly helpful, but back to the testing. Now the fifth measurement is blood oxygen saturation and as you can see right here these show the lowest correlation having basically no correlation between the two Apple watches. Now I wasn't sure exactly how Apple calculates this but I took the average over the night. As you can see all values for both watches are roughly between 94 and 97 percent I would say but there was very little agreement between the two so any value you get within this range is within the noise level of the Apple watch. Now the fact that blood oxygen saturation at least on me showed most noise is good in some ways since in the US Apple watches cannot use the blood oxygen saturation measurements because of a lawsuit so the fact that this specific one out of all five is missing in the US might not be an issue for most people. That being said, anyone suffering from sleep apnea might get much stronger variation and also much stronger correlation in this type of plot and therefore unlike me they would get important information from the blood oxygen saturation measurements during the night. It could actually be that they discover they have sleep apnea because of a watch like the Apple Watch. So again I should remind you that the results we see here are applicable to me and many of them will translate to most other people but there will be specific scenarios where this isn't the case. So resting heart rate, breathing rate and total sleep time are super consistent between my two Apple Watch Ultras and they seem to be super reliable even for small changes. For skin temperature and oxygen saturation you probably need bigger deviations for an Apple Watch to be able to pick up on these. So be aware of that when you're interpreting your vitals data. Rob from the future here. So I realized while editing the video I didn't completely explain all my decisions in terms of analysis. So for many of my normal videos I use some kind of reference to test the accuracy of different measurements but in this case I didn't actually have a good reference for all the measurements and as a proxy I decided to compare two similar Apple watches to each other and what we can assume here is that if two measurements don't agree very well then both Apple watches or one of the two Apple watches isn't measuring them very well so they're not very reliable. If on the other hand two Apple watches do get similar values it's much more likely they're getting reliable measurements. We still don't know it for sure then because they could have the same type of bias so measuring something totally off but I don't think that's likely so this was the best and most reliable test I could do in this case but I'll try in the future to also add different reference devices but back to Rob from the past. And that interpretation is exactly where the Vitals app still lags behind the competition. Yes, when you wake up you might see a deviation in the Vitals app, but the context and interpretation given by Apple for this deviation is super limited. If I slept more than usual, I get a warning that my sleep duration was high. And the explanation is, as it says in the app, your sleep duration can be affected by a range of behavioral health and environmental factors, such as stress, medication, alcohol, caffeine, illness, or travel. So super general and not very actionable. Compare that for instance to the Whoop strap. Last night my blood oxygen level was low according to the Whoop strap, and if 
I click on that data, it gives me context, when to pay attention, and it also recommends me to keep an eye on this metric over the next few days. Now, in this case, I actually suspect it was a false low measurement because the outside temperature went down over the last few days, and I actually did not add warmer blankets in my colder room, which might have meant my skin temperature was too low for a reliable oxygen saturation measurement. But still, the context helped me and I wasn't worried about it. Or let's take a look at another example of where the Whoop strap measured my health statistics during the night. This was the night after I worked hard on the Apple Watch Series 10 review a week or two ago, where I did a ton of workouts in a single day. It's easy I had a really low HRV that night, but it automatically puts it in the context of my hard workouts and explains how these could be the reason and advises me to potentially take it easy for a bit. For that exact same night, the Aura Ring also detected things were a bit off with both my resting heart rate and HRV and also recommends I take it easy. And this kind of interpretation and actionable advice is where the Vitals app is still lacking and where Aura and Whoop are ahead of it. Oh, and talking about HRV, which is short for heart rate variability, this isn't included in the Vitals app. For some reason, Apple decided not to include this metric, even though there's a ton of evidence this is an informative metric. Now, there's generally a very strong negative correlation between resting heart rate and HRV, but they're still not completely interchangeable and it's unclear to me why Apple just didn't include HRV as well. So is the Vitals app a step in the right direction? Yes, without a doubt. But is it on the level of Aura and Whoop? Well, I would say not even close, but closer than it was before. And that's kind of sad, honestly, because in terms of data quality, the Apple Watch is great, especially in terms of heart rate tracking, sleep tracking, and potentially also breathing rate. They are measured really well by any recent Apple Watch. Also for heart rate tracking during sports activities, the Apple Watch is basically the undefeated champion. However, for some of us, interpreting health data might be harder than for others, and Aura and Whoop provide much better apps to help with that. So it really depends on your personal situation and preferences. I personally use both an Aura Ring and a Whoop strap on a daily basis, which is why I emphasize these two in this video. Now, if you do decide to get yourself an Apple Watch, an Aura Ring, a Whoop strap, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save yourself some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that not cost you any extra and some even provide a significant discount. Now, given that you watched this entire video on the Apple Watch, check out this video on the Apple Watch Series 10 or this video on the devices I actually use myself. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.